good afternoon. I don't know how well this will go through, but I'm driving and I just had in my heart to share with you about building yourself up in the faith each day. So when you wake up in the morning, you remind yourself who you are and who the Lord is. So you start off with Jesus is Lord, okay? So you want to make that a personal proclamation, not just Jesus is Lord, like you're just flippantly saying it kind of like what some people do with the Lord's Prayer and that kind of thing. But you want to talk to yourself about what that means. Like Matthew 28, 18 tells us the same power. And so we're like, Jesus is Lord. And all authority on heaven and earth belongs to Him. And He is my Lord. Not just that He is Lord. He is Lord of my family. He is Lord of my car. He is Lord of where I go. He is Lord of what I say. He is Lord of what I wear. Um, Romans 10, 9 tells us that if we will confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So he is our Lord. Um, he is the Lord of the Sabbath. He is our sovereign Lord and God. He is the Lord of Lords. Um, so start off with one of the things you could do is start off with Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord of my life. He is Lord of my family. Um, he is Lord of my children. He is Lord of the hill that we live on. He is Lord of each of the cabins. He is Lord of what I say. He is Lord of what I do. Then, number two, we can um, remind ourselves of what he said in Mark 16, 15 through 20, and in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he has given us what is called the Great Commission. He has commissioned us to go into the, all the world and preach the gospel. And not just to preach it, but to heal and to set people free from what holds them in bondage, casting out demons and so forth. So the way that we would do the next part of it would say, I go into all the world. I preach the gospel everywhere I go. Now, for you, if some of the things I'm saying aren't what you do, then you need to start doing them and speak them into existence. Say what you want to see and not what is, and then move yourself towards it. So, if you're basically prophesying over yourself, that's not lying. Okay, so I go into all the world. I preach the gospel to every living creature. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. I speak with new tongues. If you don't have your prayer language and you don't speak in the Holy Spirit, just speak it into existence. I speak in tongues. I speak with a new language. Okay, so... I go about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil because the Lord is with me. Serpents or scorpions, I walk on top of them and they cannot harm me. Like Paul with that ass, you know, that grabbed a hold of him. It can't touch you. It can't harm you. Uh, nothing deadly that I've drunken is going to harm me. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. I cast out demons. I go into all the world. I preach the gospel. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. Then the next one is number three, I treat others the way I want to be treated. So Matthew 7, 12 is um, the, um, what is it called? Uh, people know it as the golden rule. Uh, that I do unto others as I would want done unto me. So, if I'm going to do unto others as I want done unto me, when I see somebody in bondage, I'm going to set them free. So, I do unto others as I'd want done to me. So, when I see someone hurting, I go to them and lay my hands on them and Jesus sets them free. When I see someone blind, I lay my hands on them and Jesus heals them and they see if someone is in need and I see that they have a need, I go and meet that need. So speak out who you are. Speak these things into existence. Not just that there are thoughts in the world.
word and make it personal because I do it. I do it. I, I, I. But it's not about me, 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 me. But this is what you do. And then number four. I'm anointed. It's about the anointing that abides. So 1 John 2, 27 tells us that we received anointing, that it abides, and that it teaches us. So let's make that personal, okay? I'm anointed. I'm anointed all the time. I've received the anointing from God. That anointing abides. It doesn't come and go. It doesn't, it's not heavy part of the time and light part of the time. It abides. It stays. It never leaves. It's always fully strong, fully in me because Christ is in me. The Holy Spirit is in me. And that abiding teaches me. That Holy Spirit teaches me everything I need to know because I've received it and it abides. It doesn't leave and it doesn't go. I'm anointed all the time, no matter where I go, whether I'm in the bathroom or in the store or in a park or where we're going right now, which is skating. I am anointed. I'm anointed all the time, no matter where I go, no matter what I do, I am anointed. The next one is knowing that power and authority and ability that we've been given. So Luke 10, 19 tells us that, that we... Um, can tread on serpents and scorpions and there no power of the enemy can touch us okay so we have to keep that in our mind we have to know this and make it ours so we tell ourselves that nothing can harm me I walk on serpents and scorpions that we're driving and I've got um, PCV pies in there. They go tee, 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 tee. so sorry about that. It was a little distraction. That everywhere I go is holy ground. I step on it. There's nothing that can harm me. I walk on the serpents and scorpions. All the powers of the enemy are under my feet. I have power and authority over all the powers of the enemy. There's nothing that he can do to stop me or to hurt me or to hinder me because that power and authority has been given to me by God. So I have that a power and authority. The one residing and living in me has commissioned me to go into all the world, to preach the gospel, that nothing can harm me. The enemy cannot touch me, cannot speak to me, cannot mess with me because he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. All power and authority has been given to me. Number six, everything Jesus did, I can do and greater. So John 14, in 10 miles, 14, continue on to Miss Cook. So sorry if you're here in the phone is talking to me about where I need to go. So God's word tells me that verily, verily, I say unto you, and he's telling us, like, truly, truly, I mean, this is really important, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me can, he's, I'm just paraphrasing everything, can do everything that I did and greater if you only believe. So the key there is believing. So you believe it and you speak it. You don't believe that you have the faith. You believe what he said is true and then he performs it so everything that Jesus did I can do I lay hands on the sick and they recover I cast out demons I speak with new tongues I can change water into wine I can walk on water I can't say that I've done that yet but you know I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ I'm not gonna put any negative in there I can walk on water I cast out demons, the blind see, the lame walk, the mute speak, um, arms that are messed up are healed and function properly. And remember, he said everything that he did and greater. So, and the greater. I speak to people in another country via Skype or Zoom or some other form and they are healed. And I mean, we've seen this firsthand. We've had meetings at midnight in Afghanistan via Skype and people are healed with shoulders and back 
and stuff like that. These are the greater things. I mean, Jesus didn't stand in, you know, uh, out on this shore of Galilee and then heal somebody over in Bethlehem. So, I mean, that is something greater. Well, okay. My son's like, well, my, actually, he did. Now he's reminded me of different ones coming to him. So, yeah, he did. But he didn't do multiple at one time. And it was one person coming to him. But anyway, doing things through the internet and doing things via um, phone is a little bit different. And I'm not saying that that is what the greater is, but to a certain degree, that is greater. But God's Word tells us in John that we will do greater than He did if we just simply believe. So, just simply believe what He said was true. Not that you are greater, but that He cannot lie. It's impossible for Him to lie. And number seven, as he is, so are we in this world. So as he is right now, sitting at the right hand of the Father with all power and authority, I am sitting with him at the right hand. Spiritually, I am. He is in me, and I am in him, and he is in the Father, and the Father is him, in him. And so, because I'm in him, and he's in me, and the Father's in him, and he's in the Father, that means the Father's in me. That means all three of us are one, but even more than that, the Holy Spirit lives in me, and that anointing abides all the time. It never goes. So the four of us are one. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. Everything he said is true. He is my Lord. He is Lord of everything. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. He strengthens me. He is the giver of all wisdom and knowledge. And all these blessings from heaven and all the mysteries are mine. And that mystery is Christ in me. The hope of glory. So he is in me. So all I do is open my mouth. And the Lord jumps forward. And he performs what I speak into existence. So remember, remind yourself, self-talk to yourself. It's easier to self-talk to myself than it is to explain to self-talk to yourself, if that makes any sense. But it really helps build you up as into who you are and what your job is. Your job in this world is to be just like your big brother Jesus as he is so am I in this world I go about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil because the Lord is in me he abides in me he doesn't come and go he stays they have made their dwelling in me I am the temple of the Lord I lay my hands on people and they do recover not that they might recover, but they do. So, I hope that helps somebody else there. Now, all I know is that the Lord put it on my heart to share it with you guys today. So, right now, if there's any of you out there that are have affliction, that are being oppressed of the devil, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, devil, to come out of them right now. Devil, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will be silent. Mind be renewed in the name of Jesus Christ by taking in the word, speaking the word, and doing the word. Now, there's a back out there in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak life into it. Pain, go away now in the name of Jesus Christ. Pain, you are gone. Back, you feel that fire from heaven heating that spot and feeling that warmth. Now I want you to bend forward and back and side to side and feel that change. Do what you couldn't do before. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, there's a right leg around the knee area. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak life into that right knee right now. Right now, pain, go. Throbbing, gone. Swelling, go away. Now I want you to take that leg right now and extend it in and out, in and out. Feel that go. Feel that. Now I would love for y'all to send me back a message when the Lord blesses you. Because I like to hear back from you guys. That right knee, you should feel that. 
Isn't that awesome? Right now, we've got somebody who has pain in their pelvis. In two area. miles. In Continue on to... Jesus Christ, I speak of life into that pelvis. Be healed, be whole, and function correctly. In the name of Jesus Christ, we've got some lungs that are having a hard time doing full inhalation and exhalation. In the name of Jesus Christ, blockage go now. Lungs be healed. You are whole and functioning correctly. Now give me a deep breath in and exhale. Another big deep breath and exhale. We've got a headache just behind the eyes and coming right across the bridge of the nose. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak life into you. You are healed and whole in Jesus' name. Now, I want all of you out there to go claim the truth and you go do what you haven't done before. Now have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.